meeting now. Okay. So, uh, I'll do a brief introduction of Professor Chow now. So, Professor Chow is one of the co-founders of CEC, which stands for Cultural Enrichment Coalition, and is the current vice chair. Uh, their organization built and established over 150 libraries throughout China and offers many programs to educate and enrich their community. So, Professor Chow, do you want uh, to give a, us a more in-depth uh, introduction about yourself? Well, uh, you uh, did very well already. Uh, just one small correction. Uh, we have established around 200 libraries in China already and uh, since 1991. Okay, the first one was established in 1991 in Zhejiang, Jiandu, and uh, <clears throat> it's still operating. And uh, two or three years ago, it was uh, selected as the uh, one of the best small library in China. So uh, that's just one example. And uh, the program is winding down, winding down now. And uh, one, because of the pandemic. And secondly, because, you know, China is getting uh, more and more capable of taking care of this kind of, st some, uh, this kind of project themselves already. And then after all, China is the number two economic power, right, in the world. So <laughs> it's no longer a, a, a poor country as we started 20 years ago or 30 years ago. And uh, so we are very pleased. And uh, so uh, uh, that's the situation. <clears throat> and in fact, library is only part of the program. Okay, uh, you know, uh, in, we talk about cultural en enrichment, and in fact, we talk about cultural mutual understanding. So we we are doing a lot of things, promoting the mutual understanding between the east and the west. So besides the uh, library program in China, we are doing a lot of. Pro uh, activities here in the United States as well. And uh, like, um, you know, uh, uh, mostly a lecture series and uh, on various kinds of project, you know, and uh, often uh, held in the public library and everybody was welcome. And uh, so well, we're pleased to learn about uh, your organization. I think it's great to see so many young people, you know, getting together, trying to do the right thing. Back to you. All right, thank you, Professor Chow. So it sounds quite incredible uh, what your organization has done so far. So uh, I've been wondering, uh, what are the first steps you took to become the organization you are today? Well, the first step is an idea. And uh, in 1989 or 1990, we had this idea of doing something in China and uh, uh, without using too much money because we're not a rich organization. In fact, we're all, uh, you know, working people and uh, no entrepreneurs or, 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 or big millionaires. So uh, how do you do something without too much money and without this project? It worked. And uh, generally we get the uh, cooperation of people in China. And uh, as a professor in, uh, as a professor in, uh, in Northridge, we have a, a uh, very active program with China through the China Institute. And uh, so there are lots of uh, visiting scholars from uh, China and uh, we get to know lots of people in China. And uh, so that's how we uh, started working with these uh, people from China and to get this thing started. It's not just on our own, you know, we get uh, the um, uh, help a lot from uh, many visiting prof uh, professors and the scholars uh, from various China, especially the library experts. All right, thank mm -hmm. you, Professor Chow. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, do you have some more to add? Oh, uh, okay. So uh, next question, how did you first get the money to build your first library? Well, uh, <clears throat> for the first library, we uh, asked for donations among our friends and members. You know, we're part of the uh, San Fernando Valley Chinese Cultural Association, and uh, which has been established since 1972. And uh, so uh, uh, it's a big organization. So we started out 
asking people in the organization to donate money, $10, $20, that kind of thing. So uh, first of all, let me tell you a little bit about our library, pro uh, library budget. We are talking about libraries in rural China, <coughs> not in big cities like Shanghai or Beijing. We figure a big cities like Shanghai or Beijing, they don't need our help. We talk about very poor, okay, remote areas in in China, and a lot of them. And uh, so um, uh, it doesn't take, it didn't take too much money to do a small library over there. And uh, in most cases, China, even though poor back then in 1990, and um, it's a very good uh, structure throughout the entire uh, country. And in particular, everywhere, no matter where you look at, there's a uh, uh, organization or government organization called Wong uh, Hua And they generally are re responsible for, you know, educating the local people. And uh, so we'll get contact with those Wong Hua Zhan. And, uh, and they, of course, many of them are very interested in our program because we provide the money, they just have to provide a building, a room actually, just a room and facility, like chairs and tables and shelves. And we give them money to buy books. They have to staff the library. We don't pay for their, uh, their personnel. They have to find personnel themselves, okay? And that we, our money is strictly for the books, okay? And the books are bought in China, okay, it's through several book vendors. And those books were directly shipped to the library, okay. And uh, so uh, it's a very simple idea that has been working very well. And uh, that's how we started. Thank you, Professor Chow. So uh, next on, what inspired you to start your organization and build libraries for these rural areas in China? Well, you know that um, generally as a uh, <clears throat> part of the San Fernando Valley Chinese Cultural Association, we're always trying to do something for the community, for the Chinese people. And uh, so back then, China just opened up and uh, there are a lot of things going on and that need to be done. And of course, naturally, we're interested in doing something to help out. And uh, as I said, we don't have money. We're not billionaires. We're not entrepreneurs. We're not big company owners. And uh, so we're trying to figure out a way that we, uh, as a professor, as an engineer, as a small shop owner, okay, and uh, was able to do. And uh, so this is something we, tr we thought is possible and we tried and it worked. And uh, let me add it on. Uh, at the very beginning, <clears throat> actually throughout most of the years, the library is a very low budget library, okay? And each library is given 6,000 US dollars. Uh, back in the 90s, 6,000 US dollars was a lot of money, okay? Now, $6,000 US dollars is not, not, much, not much at all in China, okay? But back then, it was a lot of money. It was not a lump sum to be given out. It was given out in three years, okay, say 2000 a year, okay. And uh, uh, for the first two years, they have to renew. We have to check on their progress. If they are making good progress and the money will be renewed up to $6,000, okay. Most of them renewed, okay. Most of them keep us, uh, uh, keep us connected. Uh, about their progress. And uh, we sometimes actually uh, would do a side visit, okay? Either we go there on our own or we, we ask a deputy to go there. You know, we actually uh, uh, have uh, three ambassadors in China, okay? And uh, they happen to be uh, people from outside uh, with some job uh, duties in China and uh, so we ask them to be our ambassadors. And so they do a, a, um, uh, a periodic uh, visit to various 
a different um, part of China to see how things are doing. And uh, generally, if they're doing fine, uh, we, we keep our promise, we will renew our project. If they need help, we try to figure out what kind of help we can provide to them. Okay. And, uh, but generally, most of the libraries are very, very self-sustained. And uh, they are doing very hard to keep it going themselves. And then that's not how we started. And that's how it lasted so long till then, till now, okay. Yeah, back to you. Right. Any questions? Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, uh, hi, Professor Chow. My name is Aaron. Uh, I'm also part of a member of Cheer. Uh, I'll also be helping uh, conducting this interview as well. Um, so, uh, one question I have for you is what were some difficulties or problems that you uh, encountered? Uh, and what did you do to solve them? Oh, difficulties. Um, they are frequent difficulties. Um, the general uh, problem was the communication. And uh, sometimes it's difficult to find the right person to talk to. Or sometimes it's difficult to find the right person uh, or uh, to keep contact with the right person. In other words, every library was established through the local Wen Hua Zen. But uh, to get hold of the people over there is not always a success. Okay. And we demand annual report uh, with a deadline. And uh, some libraries do, did not often meet the deadlines. And uh, so we have to make sure they are doing their jobs. And uh, so communication is the uh, generally the most difficult part. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Professor Chow. And uh, how did you expand your organization or uh, gain support for it? Well, you know, after a while, we gained uh, some reputations. So uh, we also gained some publicities. So uh, as I said, at the very beginning, uh, our donors were all small donors, okay? And uh, uh, they, would, they would give $10, $20, maybe uh, up to $100 and so on individually. And that took uh, quite some pain to collect in the month $6,000 to a library. But gradually, you know, after 10 or 20 libraries, and uh, we begin to have a uh, reputation. Uh, so, so people learn about us. So there were people came to us, okay, and willing to make bigger donations and uh, uh, to help us out. And also, of course, we provide them, provide the donors, big donors, with some incentives. For instance, uh, they can dedicate the library to someone uh, in their family in the past, for example, okay. And, uh, you know, lots of us have roots in China. And uh, so, and uh, quite a few people uh, were interested in supporting a library to uh, commemorate uh, their family members. And uh, so that uh, helped a lot. <clears throat> so uh, on that note, um, how do you like get the word out about your project? Uh, like it, it was like in 91 uh, w when you mentioned you started, uh, that was like before internet was bigger than stuff. So uh, what did you do to get the word out? Well, newspapers, newspapers, mainly Chinese newspapers, you know, like World Journal and, uh, and the, the local Los Angeles were, uh, Chinese newspapers. And uh, we more than once were, uh, featured in uh, their uh, major articles in the papers. So that's how we get to, to be known to pe local uh, uh, Chinese community people. <clears throat> but nowadays, of course, with internet, with website, it should be much easier. Okay, uh, and the uh, next question I have for you is, uh, is there anything that you wish that you known before that you, you started your project? Well, uh, not really. And uh, we uh, uh, didn't never realized, you know, China developed so fast and, uh, and has reached a, mo a stage that this kind of library probably is no longer uh, much needed in China and China can 
they take very much take care of its own. And in fact, uh, you know now that the the, uh, the Chinese government budget a library for every location, every rural location, and uh, with a uh, very new facilities and uh, equipment and the buildings and so on. And uh, so, and gradually, our kind of library is no longer needed. And uh, so for the last couple of years before the pandemic, for example, we have expanded our library programs to scholarship programs. So instead of building new libraries, we would give money to the existing libraries. For instance, a school, a rural school in Yunnan, in Gansu, okay. And uh, they, because of their location, and uh, they may have some difficulties getting uh, supplies they need. So we'll provide more books to the existing libraries instead of establishing a new library. And that's one thing. And also in those rural places in Yunnan, Guizhou, for example, there are still uh, places which are uh, uh, very poor with poor families and the difficulty subsiding, uh, subsisting and uh, in providing enough education for the youngsters would give scholarships uh, to those people. Yeah. And of course, I forgot to mention, in every um, location where we have libraries, we have a local coordinator, okay? And they are volunteers, okay? They are in between us and uh, the Wenhua Zhan. In other words, Wenhua Zhan is more governmental uh, entity. And uh, these people are between Wenhua Zhan and us. And uh, so uh, they helped a lot, you know. And uh, so they will tell us, you know, what's really needed and what's really not necessary. And uh, they give us suggestions. And, uh, and uh, so that helped a lot. <clears throat> All right. So uh, like you said, there was uh, local coordinators and people like that. So. How many total volunteers slash coordinators did you have in total for your organization? Oh, I would say we have a, uh, <clears throat> around 20, 25, 30, <clears throat> maybe 25, yeah, I would say. You know, our, actually, we don't have uh, any specification on location we choose. We, we go where uh, there's opportunity. So our library actually uh, project co covered from Heilongjiang to uh, Zhejiang to uh, to Guizhou, okay, and uh, from uh, Fujian to uh, uh, Qinghai, Xinjiang, Douyou, yeah, practically almost everywhere, you know, and uh, we will not care, we will not uh, claim that we cover every province, but we cover most of our provinces, yeah, and uh, so it, we, we would go to a place if we can find a coordinator. We can find uh, volunteers, okay? And we can f if we could find people which uh, uh, the place is feasible and the person are dedicated to this cause and, uh, and willing to do it as a volunteer. And that's how we expand. I think the internet cut out from uh, uh, Aaron. Can you hear him still? No. Okay. Uh, Professor Chow, do, do you mind uh, repeating uh, what you said uh, because uh, you cut out for a second? Oh, really? Well, generally, as I said, we uh, um, uh, we did have a, uh, a close knit group of uh, volunteers or local coordinators. And uh, uh, they are generally volunteers. And uh, they are recommended by uh, other volunteers, for example. So volunteers will recommend additional volunteers and throughout people. And uh, I think, you know, as a professor from uh, uh, Cal State Northridge, we have a network of uh, scholars in China. So that helps a lot, you know. So uh, especially we had a network of librarians uh, from China. And uh, so they, through them, you know, they channel us to 
lots of local people and uh, to get this ball rolling. And uh, so that's how uh, things worked. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Professor Chow. And uh, the next question I have, uh, so I trust that the first library you built was probably the hardest library to build. So uh, where was it located and why did you choose that place to locate it in? Uh, the first library was not the hardest. <laughs> and the, the hardest part was the third or fourth. And uh, the first one was uh, incidental. And uh, we have a uh, <coughs> visiting scholar from Zhejiang who was the uh, head of library of Zhejiang Dashui. Okay. And he stayed in our campus, university campus for a year. So we got to know him and uh, <coughs> And we talk about this uh, idea we had in mind, and he immediately jumped in and said he he would like to join us. So when he returned, and uh, he scouted for us, and uh, he found this first place for us, and uh, so the first one was not difficult; it's just by luck, okay. <laughs> and uh, and it, and it, it's a good omen because uh, uh, it was so successful and still exists today, as I said and it's doing very well. <clears throat> so that gives us a lot of encouragement. <clears throat> but uh, once we have the first success, uh, the second, third, maybe the fourth, will turn out to be difficult. By the way, we did establish uh, around 200 libraries, but uh, there were some failures. Okay, maybe three or four failures. Not bad, huh? So that means uh, 195 or more are still existing, okay. I, I think you cut out again. Oh, uh, Professor Chow? We can't hear you. Uh, could you, would you mind repeating that? Uh, you cut out one, one more time. I said, uh, uh, Professor first, Chow, uh, is yes, there, is there, um, is it possible for you to switch a location in your home? Is there somebody using microwave at this moment? Uh, you, you mean my location has something wrong with it? Oh, you, your signal turns yellow and red. So, oh, now it's, uh, now it's good. Okay. And uh, actually, I'm very close to my modem. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know of any other pla better place. Maybe my modem is out of date. <clears throat> oh, it's good. No, it's good. Yeah. Anyway, and uh, I think um, <clears throat> uh, the important thing is uh, you don't uh, give up because of failure. You know, uh, you don't get a hundred percent, and. Uh, uh, if you feel frustrated too easily, then you won't get anything done, all right? And uh, so even though we did have some failure, but thanks, uh, thanks goodness that there were not too many, but still, even when we have failure, we try to find other successes. <clears throat> all right, so I have one more question for you, Paris Chow, regarding yes. this. So uh, you said that your third or fourth library was the hardest. So what part of that was uh, really difficult or hard? Well, I think um, uh, back then it was in the 90s. And uh, that place, the people there, they are just interested in the money, you know. And they have very little idea what a library is and what is library for, okay. so. Uh, so I think that's the, pro the, 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 the basis of the problem, okay? Uh, in other words, uh, uh, well, actually we learned something from that experience. We found out we need to find some people at least have some good understanding of knowing what library is for, you know? Somebody just say, oh, you, uh, you have money. Uh, sure, I'll do whatever you want me to do without knowing what library is. Or what for? What was the purpose? You know, so we we learned that. So from that point on, we were very cautious 
in making sure the people willing to accept our money and understand what library is and what our library is for, okay? And then knowing the importance of library. And by the way, all the libraries are op open shelves. They open to anybody, okay? And uh, they are located in a convenient place in the, in the village or a small town, okay? And uh, anybody can walk in and look at the read books or in borrow books, okay? So it's very much, uh, you know, catered to everybody, not to students, not just to a student. It's, uh, we, libraries not only work for books, okay, it's a place for books. Actually, some rural places use it to, to um, hold workshops, you know, because most of libraries are rural libraries. So in the rural libraries, often they use the library to ask the uh, provincial government to hold you know, special workshops, uh, improving their agriculture, for example. Okay, and uh, for example, uh, one successful uh, library in uh, Shanxi, and uh, they told, gave us uh, a list of workshops they, they, they held, and uh, they said that local farmers learn so much from the workshops and end up improving their agriculture industry over there. So the library is more than just a library for books, okay? And it's a, it's a community uh, gathering place for doing whatever they, they feel like to do, okay? okay. Are you, by the way, uh, is chair interested in, in uh, uh, doing a library somewhere? Uh, well, we're, we're kind of planning right now, but we still have to take our first, uh, steps and still plan a bit more. Yeah, we mm -hmm. may go to the library somewhere, but right now we're still planning. Uh, where do you think your library is going to be? In which country, for example? Perhaps in China, or maybe we might just build one here. Uh, would you sub I, the voice is too low, I cannot hear you. Oh, uh, he said maybe. perhaps in China or a local area. Or uh, in the United States, you mean? Yeah, we haven't come I think that's a great idea. In fact, I know some people in uh, Philadelphia doing very well, you know, in the Philadelphia ghettos, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, Philadelphia is a big country, a big city like uh, Los Angeles, but they have very uh, a poor area, you know, with a, uh, <clears throat> with a lot of problems. You know, even Los Angeles had a lot of problems. So actually, uh, uh, I think, uh, if you have that in mind, I, I think that's a great idea. You don't have to go far to do things. There are a lot of things you can do around you. Uh, Albert, uh, do you mind to talk about the library pro project you, uh, you were planning? Uh, to, to be frank, I was pretty surprised we're going to build a library in China. That's something new to me. Well, uh, I would say building uh, libraries in China now is very difficult because China is a rich country now. They don't need our 6,000 US dollars anymore. You know, back in 1990, 6,000 US dollars is a lot of money in China and can do a lot of things. Nowadays, 6,000 US dollars is very little, you know. So uh, I don't think you want to repeat our success. You want to find new endeavors, okay? And uh, it's an idea. You know, you, you could do it in Africa. You could do it in Central America or South America. You can do it in the, uh, the Los Angeles ghettos, you know, in the uh, West area, South, uh, South Los Angeles. There's a lot of uh, poverty there. And uh, so, uh, of course, nothing is, is uh, easy, especially for the uh, for something to start. The first one is always difficult. And the first few is always difficult, of course. So, but anyway, I, I don't know your goal, so I cannot speak, for, but I, I'm sure you will find the right place to do it. All right, thank you, Professor Chow. So uh, I could talk uh, for a brief moment about uh, our leadership project team. So uh, me and a few others from CHEER uh, made a leadership project team. And one of our projects was related to a library. So 
uh, we were planning on either building a library or donating books or doing something related to a, a book slash library somewhere. Uh, first, we thought about foreign countries like uh, Syria, China, Africa, uh, and then we thought locally. So uh, right now we're still in the we're still in the planning stage. So uh, yeah, that was basically like a little brief introduction. But yeah. Well, I think that's uh, <coughs> certainly uh, something uh, uh, ought to be encouraged. I think uh, uh, whatever library is needed. And uh, uh, it's worth it's a worthwhile endeavor, and uh, of course, and I just want to remind you, uh, library may not be the only thing. Okay, library is one thing you can do, and it may not be the only thing you can do, and uh, and uh, and, and library may not be the easy thing to do. There can be other things easier than library. Okay, let me tell you a little bit. Besides library, you know, our our organization called CEC is called the Cultural Enrichment Coalition. And uh, it was a newer name. Uh, to start out with, we talk about the cultural exchange. Uh, okay. And the cultural exchange means we try to promote understanding between East and West, between Eastern cultures and Western cultures. Okay. So uh, in addition to the library, we hold monthly lectures in the uh, Northridge area. Okay. And uh, sometimes in Chinese, sometimes in English. And uh, uh, especially if it's in, it was English, we will we'll put it in the public library so that anybody, you know, uh, are welcome to can walk in and listen. And we advertise it through the. Uh, we get this uh, uh, coordinate with the local library. For instance, most of our lectures were in Northridge Library across the street from the CSUN campus, and uh, they uh, helped a lot. Uh, uh, and uh, for the past. Uh, 10 or 20 years. And uh, they have a very good auditorium and, uh, and uh, with the adequate uh, audio and the video uh, e equipment. And uh, we uh, uh, we just hold all kinds of li lectures. Not necessarily culture, sometimes, you know, just any topics we can talk about. And uh, for instance, uh, we have a couple of lectures about uh, <clears throat> uh, science and medicine and uh, done by very prominent uh, young Chinese uh, American scientist. Okay, we uh, the last I remember the last one. It was a professor, a young professor from UC San Francisco, and about his research, about his invention, and about the application of his invention, and uh, that's one example. Okay, and uh, and sometimes we talk about we have a, uh, we invited authors to come to uh, give us a lecture to uh, tell the audience about his or her new books, okay? And talk about his his new books or her new books, that kind of thing. And then we have uh, uh, artists, okay? And uh, painters, okay? And, uh, and uh, photographers uh, coming in to show their artwork and so on. And if they're not limited to Chinese, okay? We, because we talk about cultural exchange or uh, cultural enrichment and uh, try to promote understanding between the East and the West. I think we want to listen to anybody, everybody. So that's another thing we do. So it's besides the library, we, we are doing a lot of things in the United States, right here in the um, San Fernando Valley. And uh, so anyway, that's just for uh, uh, to give you some examples of what, what we're doing. Yeah, I've been to uh, lectures, but uh, at- Yes, I remember, that's right, uh, your presence. Mm -hmm. And you invited an artist from China, and actually I, I still keep in touch with her, so- Oh, okay, uh, good. Yeah, she's doing, uh, promoting uh, non-profit art program for this, uh, this, uh, this in, uh, kids in need. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And he was, she was doing great in China. Yeah, sure. You know, sometimes uh, uh, your husband uh, uh, is running the China Institute, right? And um, uh, so we actually, uh, Sisang actually got uh, frequent visitors from China and uh, have uh, scheduled many uh, 
uh, lectures by the uh, those China, China uh, Chinese visitors. And on one hand, not all Chinese visitors uh, were fluent in English, so sometimes asking them to to give a lecture, it's it's a little bit difficult and awkward. Now, of course, CSA often provide translators if they were not able to give lectures in English. But uh, you know, after translation, after translator, and uh, the, the lecture is no no longer authentic. Yeah. So, um, uh, oh, and from time to time, we will provide those Chinese visitors who were not too fluent in English to give a lecture in his own language, that is Chinese, you know, in 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 our organization, to give uh, to to the Chinese audience. I remember uh, we have some very exciting lectures. One from the uh, Zhejiang Dashui Yi Su Shui Yuan. It's the dean of the the uh, art college. I remember I listened to his lecture in on CSUN campus with a translator. Just a slow and awkward, not exciting at all. But when I asked him to give a lecture in, within our organization in Chinese, I, he was flamboyant, very exciting, you know, very lively. And uh, he was directly engaging the audience. You know, that kind of opportunity uh, uh, are existing from time to time. And I think those are the things uh, we are still trying to do. Even, you know, the library program is winding down, but but uh, the, the mutual understanding between East and the West can go on forever. Probably it's more important than before. Yeah, your, your organization and Chinese Institute uh, are mainly concentrated on offering activities for adults. Uh, but here, at this moment, uh, most of our, our activities are targeted at uh, students. So actually, Albert uh, invited us and one student author to talk about his book, and we recorded that session. It, it was uh, very amazing. That uh, senior high school student, Kevin, uh, he, he wrote a book about science and uh, books. Uh, he, Albert already started doing all the book talks in his session. Well, that's wonderful to know. And in fact, I think uh, it's great that you collected uh, so many, you know, spirited young men and, and women <laughs> to, to working together. I, I'm uh, very delighted to see all of you and to hear about your tears. Especially, you know, I noticed that on your website, it seems to be, uh, it's all young people, you know, doing various kind of subjects. I think that's great. I think that's a big su success. Yeah, the second generation of the uh, Chinese culture, uh, Chinese family, they are very, uh, they have talent. They, they are very successful. Oh, of course. But actually, currently in the audience, there are uh, a couple of CSUN young professors. Uh, Professor Liu, he's from computer science department. Mm -hmm. And Jeff Zhang, probably you know him. Mm -hmm. uh, Ding Yi. Uh, She's uh, currently as an academic library, librarian in CSUN. So mm -hmm. they, they are also very interested in your achievement. And they, uh, they were very impressed when I mentioned to them uh, what you have done. And uh, to my surprise, actually, you, you have done tremendous work in the last 20 years. But uh, actually, in this community, uh, you not not many Chinese family know about you, so I I think this is a good opportunity for you to introduce. Thank you, thank you very much. I think uh, uh, I think uh, you and I are doing essentially the same kind of work, you know, doing our best to uh, <coughs> to. Uh, there are a lot of things we can do. We just have to find the right thing to do. That's all. And I think you and I are trying to the, the same. You know, maybe doing different things but uh, with the same objectives. Yeah, I talk too much, so I'll, I'll pass back to you, Albert, at the All right, uh, 
Thank you, Holly and Professor Chow. So I think uh, Aaron has a few questions to ask Professor okay, Chow. Sure. Yes. So uh, you previously mentioned like uh, you had a couple of failures uh, and one of it, which you mentioned like that people running libraries that are not necessarily fit to be running a library. Uh, so are there any other failures that you encountered? Uh, and if so, do you think they were inevitable or <coughs> think they could have been avoided? And if so, how do you think you could have avoided it? Well, <clears throat> uh, you mean the uh, uh, the library program, right? Yeah, I told you the library, right? And uh, yeah. yes, and um, <clears throat> uh, in China, of course, uh, one of the uh, difficulty we encountered was uh, 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 there's a frequent change of leadership local leadership, okay? And uh, so someone in charge <clears throat> when we started the program and may not be there five years later or three years later and it's someone else. And uh, whoever, the successor sometimes has a different attitude, you know, and uh, may or may not be enthusiastic as the previous the predecessor. And uh, so uh, we, we did encounter things like that. But the thing is that our library is <clears throat> supposed to be self-sustaining. In other words, we don't monitor our library forever. Okay, we will monitor it for the first three or four years. Then it's supposed to be able to stand on its own. So we don't need to do any more uh, monitoring anymore. Okay, we did provide uh, opportunities for them to ask additional help in the, in the future, the, if they show us their progress, okay, if, you, if they show us our, their need, all right. So, you know, with a, close to 200 libraries, it's impossible for us to monitor all of them, okay. So generally, we just monitor them for the three um, to five years, that's all, you know, to make sure they are growing properly. And after that, they're supposed to be on their own. Okay. And the fun will start will stop because you know we we only give them six thousand dollars <laughs> not more but uh, we did say that <clears throat> yeah if you make progress and if you show new need we may have some additional fund but not six hundred dollars six thousand dollars but maybe you know special grant for you to do special things and uh, uh, so so uh, uh, that's how. Uh, our library is, is running. All right, thank you, Professor Chow. So mm -hmm, before welcome. we move into uh, our Q&A section, I just have a, some final few questions. So uh, if we, some high schoolers in Cheer, wanted to build a similar library in a foreign country or locally, uh, what's the most important advice you'd want to share to us? Um. Well, I guess um, it's probably the most important to find a local uh, uh, coordinator because it's impossible for you and I to be in the location all the time, right? So you want to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, someone over there is overlooking the, uh, the project. So if you can find a volunteer who, and uh, to do this kind of job, and uh, that will help a lot. And also... I think that uh, it is sufficient. In other words, uh, when we give our six thousand dollars, it's not the money we're talking about. It's to, it's the vision we talk about. We talk about library. It will grow on itself eventually. The uh, if it's if the library is doing well, eventually the government will keep on funding the library. You know, instead of uh, and so we that's the, our, our goal. We don't intend to 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 support for life. Okay, with we, we, it's like a, you know planting a uh, a tree. You know you do uh, your best in first five years, and after five years you hope it will grow by itself. So that's the idea. All right, thank you, Professor Chow. So uh, one more question here before we move on. Have you shipped any foreign language books, such as English books, to libraries in China? No, uh, never. Shipping books is uh, very cumbersome, very expensive, and uh, uh, very uh, uh, it's a, a lot of work. 
we only provide money for them to purchase books in in lab uh, in uh, bookstores in library. You know, there are lots of online libraries, a uh, lot online bookstore now, and uh, so uh, we help them select the right book, and uh, we pay for the money, and the book vendor will ship the book to the library themselves. And it's a lot easier to do this way. You know, the shipping books from the United States to to China is not practical. So Professor Cho, uh, have you ever heard about this uh, project called the Library to Africa? Uh, in the summer, a few of cheer student members, they, they run a knock book drive. They have like um, uh, 20 to 30, 30 books to deliver to another high schooler and he's doing, building a, a library in Africa. And they collect donated books from here and also collect donation to ship all these books to Africa. Uh, no, I have not heard of this uh, uh, African project, and uh, I'm sure it's, it's the first worthwhile, and I encourage you to uh, uh, work more on it. And I just want to let you know our experience. And uh, <clears throat> the China Institute of CISA was established in uh, uh, 1981 or something, 1980. Okay. I actually, was the third uh, director of China Institute. Okay, and uh, uh, back then, China Institute also have a book for China program. Okay, we collected a lot of books, unused books <coughs> on campus. And they were so overwhelmed. And uh, we have to find a, a warehouse on campus to store all the books. But the problem is books are heavy, okay. <clears throat> and all the donated books are in English. And uh, not all Chinese readers can read books in English. That's one thing. And secondly, books are heavy, so the shipping cost is pro prohibitive. Okay. <clears throat> and, uh, and secondly, not all books donated to us are of good quality. And many books are are are, are Reject. Okay. In other words, not our books are not worth our keeping. That's why they throw them to us. They don't need books for the books they don't need anymore. And they are not always good books. Okay. So I can only tell you our experience. And uh, so I, I cannot say this is uh, how I should not say how you should do or should not do for this Africa pro, uh, project. Okay. <clears throat> only through the experience uh, we have with China. And uh, China, as I said, eventually <clears throat> uh, we find out, you know, buying books in China and having the book vendor shipped to the library is a lot easier than shipping the books from here. You know, find a shipper, find a shipping company, and um, uh, to do it cheaply for you is not easy. Okay, if you do it by UPS or FedEx, you know, it's very expensive. <clears throat> All right, so uh, now uh, people in chat, you can submit your questions or you can mute, uh, unmute your mic and ask Professor Chow. So uh, while they do that, I just have one more question. So uh, do you have a proudest library you built or your favorite kind of library you built? Um, well, uh, you mean among all the libraries we established? Yes. In China? Well, I'll put it this way. <clears throat> I have not uh, been the... In our organization, <clears throat> and uh, I was the one that uh, started the program, but I, w I've, I soon gave the charge to a library profession. Okay, librarian profession. So <clears throat> she took over the program and uh, I just help out on the side, okay. But I, I did have one uh, uh, library that I was very impressed. One of the earlier libraries in uh, Guangxi near Guilin. It's not in Guilin. It, 
the back then, you know, in the 90s, I remember I have to uh, take three or four hours uh, to go from waiting to that library in, in a very rural place. But that library was run very well. Okay. And in other words, <coughs> uh, the librarians, the head of libraries, and also they gathered a group of four members, so called, you know, from the local people. Okay. And uh, they formed a board for the library, you know, board of supporters. And so practically, they run the library very well through this board because they get enthusiasm from the local uh, villagers and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, they uh, help collect books, help running the library, help manning the library. And uh, they have a very good catalog system that was before internet. So everything was on paper catalog. They catalog every book they have, okay? And uh, they have a, a library card for every uh, book reader coming to the library and uh, they record it and so on. And uh, so it was very organized. This is, all these were done by their own initiative. We never told them how to do it. They just figure out themselves. And they were doing very well back then. Now, that was one of the most impressive library yeah, to me. <clears throat> In other words, if they, if you get the local people, you know, take King seriously of this project, and they are going to do a very good job. You know, you don't want to watch over them all the time. Let's tell them how to do it. You know, let them figure out the best way they can do it themselves. Yeah, Professor Chua has a very good point, and also all the wonderful <coughs> questions. Uh, By the way, it's not Professor Chua. Uh, you can call me Professor Zhou. Uh, in Ch Chinese, it's Zhou. But uh, you know, back then when I came to the United States, it was pronounced C H O W. It's a Professor Chow. Okay, and back then it was the Chinese translation was not standardized. Unlike now, you know, Zhou is always pro uh, uh, spell as Z H O U, so uh, there will be no mistake. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, keep on. Please keep on. Actually, you may not know, I have a library degree from UCLA. Oh, that's how wonderful. And I remember when I work on my uh, master project, uh, one paper is regarding uh, Asian library in downtown area. And at that time, uh, all uh, people who come up with this library, they are volunteers, and they asked me to come up with a catalog. They said they have tons of books, but nobody can do the uh, Excel sheet for catalog. So uh, I, I didn't got time at that time. So I just remember this project, just like Professor uh, Joe said, there are a lot of library here, they need help. Like uh, Ari mentioned, uh, come up with the international library project in our last meeting. And uh, maybe we can approach some library like this. They, they already build up and they rely on volunteer to do all the work and they desperately need young hand help to digitize a lot of materials. I think that's a great idea. <clears throat> I, I remember I still borrow a book from that library. I kept it for several years because I rarely uh, go to downtown. And even, eventually, Mrs. Dean, she helped me return this book to back to that library. I hope she still remember it. Oh, yes. I think uh, <clears throat> our library uh, system in the United States is in, improving in in terms of Chinese language is concerned. And uh, <clears throat> I noticed that in, um, uh, in, in recent years, in the last 10 years, our Los Angeles Public Library, okay, all the Chinese book are uh, uh, having a standard translation. You know, title of the book, title author and uh, cataloging, you know, all have a standard translation from Chinese. And uh, you know, when I first came to uh, this country many, many years ago, there was no standard. You know, 
uh, different library uses its own invention. Okay, it's very difficult to find Chinese books, but now there are more and more Chinese books and all the translations of titles and uh, authors and so on are all standardized according to mainland uh, Chinese. And uh, someone, someone must be doing the job, including Holly probably. And, uh, but anyway, right now, uh, uh, it's very it's very easy to find Chinese folk through the China, through the uh, LA Public Library system. Yeah, I congratulate Holly and oh, professional like you. I didn't yeah. do anything, but, but anyway, you know, you know, lots of people like you, a library profession, I think they have done a lot. Yeah, thank you. Uh, actually, when I just moved uh, to Los Angeles like 20 years ago, uh, I saw LAPL has a. Uh, Chinese books, but they are all in traditional Chinese character. And I, I talked to one li librarian there, and she said the librarian who placed the order for all these Chinese books, she only knows traditional Chinese character. So she ordered these books for all the readers. She doesn't know there are more readers who need a simplified character Chinese books. So I, I didn't, uh, and she said I can help, but I actually I didn't follow up. I didn't do anything on that. Uh, but uh, if our young students want to do something for international readers, maybe they can help with uh, OAPL. Uh, this is also follow up with uh, Professor Joe's advice. Find uh, some organization which already exists and they need help. Uh, to uh, this one project. So maybe you can do some research on that area. Very, yeah, you said very good. Yeah, you said very well, yes. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Holly and Professor Chow. So uh, I see a question in chat here, Professor Chow. Uh, have you received any feedback from local residents who are using your libraries? Uh, <clears throat> I myself did not uh, have not, and uh, as I said, I'm not the the one. Uh, uh, I'm not the one uh, in charge of the library program right now. Okay, and uh, we um, uh, we do have some library professional running the library program for the last few years, and she was constantly in touch with the uh, local uh, people, coordinators, and uh, and the organizers, and so on. And she got a lot of PUX. In fact, she will also personally visit, okay, visit uh, uh, several libraries a year, and uh, has done that for many years. Yeah. We have uh, we have uh, uh, and uh, our our I'm the vice chair right now, so our chair actually did a lot of visit of China. <clears throat> but of course, keeping in touch. With the coordinator is very important, okay, because they constantly, because they are the one telling us what uh, what they need, and and uh, what they need us to do, you know, because we we don't know the all the first hand information in China, we rely on our coordinators to tell us what to do, and we have very good coordinators, for instance in Heilongjiang, in Sichuan, okay, and they're dedicated, and they. They will give us feedback from time to time, telling us, you know, uh, what they think of our project and, and what we should do next. All right, thank you, Professor Xiao. So uh, does anybody have any more questions? Please feel free to unmute yourself or type them out in the chat for us to see. I have a question for Holly. How uh, how were uh, uh, how were you able to uh, collect so many able young men and women to participate? Oh, uh, initially, uh, if you remember, P Professor Joe, we started as a youth group under SFVCCA. So uh, we we stay with that youth group for one year. So at that time, we already have like around, when we start, uh, our founder is like 10 uh, students. So actually all these 10 students, they stay with us. Like uh, Erin, uh, 
and uh, uh, she's one of the founders who joined us uh, only one month after we start the youth group. I, I think all these uh, young students, they really need uh, a local uh, organization like us. And uh, they, they want to start their own project, but uh, actually in Northridge area, there are no such organization who can support them. Like, uh, there, there is like uh, SFVCCA and uh, who, whose main goal is building the Chinese school. So after one year, we, we find out we, we have different goals and for, better, for the better development purpose, we, after talking with a few parents, we, we started our own nonprofit. And I have to say that's a very good decision because we, we have uh, freedom to uh, work on the project that uh, students want to work on. For example, uh, Albert wants to uh, pursue a library. It doesn't matter here or in the National Library. We, can, we, we just uh, support him on his idea. We don't have to ask somebody's permission. <laughs> Project. And uh, there are more parents and students started joining us after seeing all the wonderful uh, projects we, we've, do, we've been doing. Like over the pandemic, we have we launched about 20 virtual classes for the local uh, elementary school students. And the, all the teachers are uh, middle school or high school students. And uh, last year and this year during the summer and winter break, we run the three camps, virtual camps for the local students. And those camps they are very successful. And last summer and this summer is our heavy interview time. And because students, they have more time uh, in the break. And uh, students just can call in whoever they are interested. Albert really interested the, in the project, uh, the library project your organization has been working on, and he can just jump in and start doing it. Really, uh, I think we provide a platform for the students to do whatever they want it. What was it to Erin and uh, Albert to give you a better answer? Well, uh, I think uh, 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 there's lots of things I can learn from you from now, I think. And uh, uh, you have been doing very well. I have to congratulate you. And uh, Albert, and um, I want to thank you for your initiative, okay, to get in touch with me and, uh, and uh, so that we, we can meet uh, like this today. And uh, uh, so uh, I think you're doing a wonderful job and uh, keep on doing it again, okay? And uh, let's get in touch, all right? And uh, <clears throat> uh, you, we probably uh, can support each other is through some uh, way, okay? And uh, and uh, we'll do our best to support each other. How's that? Sounds good. Thank you, Professor Chow. Oh, you're welcome. For the interview and advice. So uh, we're about out of time for now. Uh, yeah. If anyone has any last minute questions, uh, feel uh, feel free to ask right now, uh, or else the interview will end here. Well, looks like that's it. Okay. And uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Okay. Thank you, Albert. Thank you, Aaron. And thank you, Holly, especially. Okay. We'll see you. Okay. All right. Thank you again. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah, good job, Albert, Erin. Good job.